Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another vlog. This morning I am foregoing coffee and I am having a tea instead. And I gotta get ready this morning. We have lots to do, lots to shoot. I'm gonna bring you along with us. Honestly, the slowest pour on the planet. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ah, I just went and curled my hair. Just a quick little curl on the ends. My easy everyday hairstyle. I've got my tea. I'm almost, I'm almost done with my tea. And I always just like to kind of catch up on the, the other Vlogmas videos while I'm doing my hair and getting ready. And now we're upstairs. It's, you know, the morning, the morning sunlight in this window. I just moved the table into the corner because it's just, it's too bright. I love waking up to a sunny day. Nothing better, in my opinion. Uh, one thing I want to point out before I get into the makeup, um, we had a tragedy. This is technically day five, but it fell off yesterday, so I got through four days with this manicure I just did. Uh, it is shellac. A lot of people on Instagram were asking about that. I don't know what to say, man. Like, whenever I post that my nails are failing, people are like, watch this on YouTube, watch this tutorial, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, you probably didn't buff, you probably didn't dry out your nail. Blah, blah, blah. The amount of nail videos I've watched, the amount of like step-by-step how-to tutorials I've watched and done on my nails, like I follow it to a T. My nails just reject <laughs> anything. I am quite, no, I don't wanna say rough with my hands, but I definitely like live my life in my nails and they just always break off. Um, so this one, this one chipped and then this nail, you know what, I'll just show you. It's one of those horrible, I have a band-aid on it cause it's so pain, Ugh, oh my God. It got like, it like pulled off right at the, I don't know what you'd call that. I wanted to say like the flesh of the nail, like it actually tore off and there was a little bit of blood and it's so sore. I hate when that happens. Okay, so I've got a little band-aid on it just to be like a pillow buffer for the rest of the day. <laughs> And usually when this happens, like I just grab like a regular polish and I'll just paint the tip to just disguise the fact that my beautiful shellac manicure hath fallen. I have tried, I have tried, you know, during this whole COVID period, I have done a lot of testing and trying with nails. I've tried my best and the second this lockdown is done and the salons open up again, I will be going straight back to my bio gel because that's just, out of all of the nail substances I've tried, like shellac, dip, regular polish, bio gel, though I hate the lines it makes on my nails, it's the only thing that like actually stays and keeps my nails hard. That's just the way it is. Ding -a -ding, ding -a -ding. So there's my nail spiel. Just wanted to give that a little touch up. Let's get into the makeup, guys. I've got a little bit of residual breakouts here that I definitely want to just cover. And I did not sleep last night. I really didn't. I've got some bags, holy moly. So let's get some refreshing makeup on, shall we? I'm gonna start with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This portion of the video is very kindly sponsored by Smashbox. You guys know how much I love this primer. I have been using it for years. I have used up bottles on bottles on bottles of it. It's a moisturizer and primer in one. It just hydrates and plumps up the skin. It uses hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. It doesn't irritate your skin and that is coming from like the most sensitive person on the planet. And I just soak my face in this. I take so many pumps and I just put it <laughs> all over my skin. It feels so good. It's so hydrating if you guys are looking to amp up the moisture in your routine. It's such a beautiful, beautiful primer option. And for my Canadian pals, if you are wanting to try out the primerizer or any of the other Smashbox products, you can shop on smashbox.ca and use my code ALANA25 and that code will give you 25% off of your purchase on the Smashbox website, which is amazing. That's not an affiliate code. I'm not making commission off that. That's just a discount for you guys. So if you're wanting to try any of the products from smashbox.ca, use that code and save yourself some dollars. So thanks so much to Smashbox for offering that code to you guys. And if you haven't tried it and then you try it, I wanna hear all about your feelings and experience with this. All right, moving on to foundation. I actually replenished my, my beauty sponge moment. They were getting pretty gross. <laughs> pretty gross and pretty filled with my skin and makeup gunk. Uh, yeah, needed to update the sponges. And I got this one because I thought the color just perfectly matched with the colors that are usually plaguing my, my beauty sponge. <laughs> And for foundation, I'm gonna use the Makeup Forever Reboot. And I've really been trying to keep up with like actually using the sponge and like cleaning it every day and using it. I feel like it's a little bit, a little bit more clean than me using like my brushes and then not washing them as often as I should be. <laughs> for concealer, I'm still loving 
the Giorgio Armani Luna Silk Concealer. I'm just gonna put that right oh, in those bags. It's so deep and I'm so tired today. Like my whole lower lash line is like this deep pink. <laughs> All right, B. This is a product I haven't used in a while. It's been in my everyday vanity and I feel like, I don't, well, I don't know if the last time I, I tried it, but the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. It's been a hot minute and usually I don't use this because I always use too much product, but because I'm on this little train with the, with the butt of the blender, perhaps it will be a much more pleasant experience. Ooh, yeah, that's a really, you know when you just don't use products for so long and you completely forget what it looks like? I'm like, oh, it's a nice color. I like that. Wow, I think I put way too much, way too much on the jawline. Ooh. I'm going to use some powder, my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Oh my god, I just hit pan on it. Can you see the sliver of light? Pan! We hit pan! <laughs> Oh my god, how exciting. How exciting. Uh, yeah, I guess I haven't like openly said this, but this has definitely become probably my favorite powder ever. I feel like it really does give an airbrushed effect when you put it on, and I clearly have been using it so much. She was just unintentionally added to our Project Pan moment. That's so exciting. We've been through so much together. <laughs> Speaking of Project Pan, benefit of <laughs> You guys, for blush, ugh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, then you would have missed this saga, if you will. I've been using Flesh and Fantasy for years, and like some of the other colors, but this is my main favorite. One of my favorite, like, very natural, everyday blushes from Marc Jacobs. It's a beautiful, beautiful formula. Um, I had one before, and the packaging actually broke, and so this was like the recent purchase I made of it, and I bought it, and it was totally fine. Didn't think twice about it. And then I used the Lush and Libido shade in one of my recent videos. And when I was doing the description box, I was trying to find it. And I'm like, it's not on the Sephora Canada website anymore. And they were on sale on the Sephora US website. And I was like, no, no, why do brands do this to us? Why does this happen? And it was just kind of a funny thing, a funny series of stories I posted on Instagram. And then I like also sent the Marc Jacobs Beauty Instagram a message and I was like, please don't tell me, please don't tell me you're discontinuing this. And they are, they have discontinued the air blush blushes and it's very sad. And so if you're in the States and you love the color, now's your time, run, run and get it before they're gone forever. It is just the most lovely. I love this color so much and I hope, I hope that they're, you know, replacing it with something else. I hope they have plans to release a new blush, but I, I wonder if they're just like repackaging it. Maybe they're making it smaller. I have no idea. Sorry, I'm going to use Becca Opal to highlight. I, I moved this up to the vanity after using it. I get a lot of requests actually to do like, oh, oh the rest of my Dior pencil just popped out and now she's done. She's gone. Sorry, I'm kind of just trying to like go through some of my older brow pencils that I've had and haven't used up. The next one I have is the Kevin Aquan Precision Brow Pencil. I don't remember the last time I used this one, but I do, I feel like this is a little bit deeper than the Dior. I'm gonna use a much, or attempt to use a much lighter hand with this one. All right, on top, using the Refi Brow Sculpt. You guys, I'm telling you, this thing, this thing is so good. A lot of you have messaged me asking what my thoughts are on this versus the Got2B, and honestly, this is just pure convenience. The Got2B definitely takes, like, more steps, if you will, and you'd also need to have an additional spoolie but the price difference, like, of course, the got to be is literally the most perfect, amazing dupe for any brow gel on the planet. I'm just lazy, and when I'm doing a quick little everyday brow, I feel like this was a wonderful addition because it works so well. Like, you get that same effect and look, and that took me less than a minute, which was fabulous. <laughs> and it's also just in general supporting a, a fellow influencer, so I think it's really exciting when influencers come out with brands no matter what, but when the product is, like, incredible. Yes, ma'am, I shall use and continue to love. Oh, I totally forgot I wanted to use the Victoria Beckham Honey 
Oh, <coughs> honey, put a little bit of this on. It's such a nice color. It's like a, it's kind of like a cool toned gold. Like it's not too yellow and bright. It's actually a really beautiful, more subdued gold, which is really nice, especially if I'm doing a more like cool toned makeup. I really like that color. I'm gonna use the Armani Eyes to Kill, right? Is that a brain fart? Yeah, Eyes to Kill. And for lips, I'm gonna use my, can you guess? <laughs> Victoria Beckham O2 Lip Definer. And then I'm gonna use the Revlon 008 Rum Raisin. Oh yeah, that's so, <sighs> such a pretty color these little lip balms. I have all of the colors <laughs> and I love them so much. And they are, in, in my opinion, the best dupes for any of the kind of lip balmy lip products that exist on the market. Well, and this is the finished makeup. I'm gonna put one more quick little <laughs> coat onto my nail now that we're done the makeup and I'll just let that sit in. And perhaps tonight I shall properly take off this polish and redo it. How annoying. For breakfast, we are having waffles, eggs and waffles. <laughs> Hello. Hi. We have eaten. The waffles were divine. We both discussed last night that today was going to be a waffle day. And so we had our waffles this morning. And um, now I'm on to my second tea. Got a little refill because for today's vlog, I thought I would do a fun little portion of like planning out my outfits because you guys know I talked about how I wanted, I wanted to be a little bit more put together this time around for the second lockdown, even though we're not, you know, necessarily leaving our house as much and doing fun things. I still just wanted to get up and get dressed and like feel better about myself. <laughs> And hopefully it would aid in being more productive during my day. So I had set out a few outfits on the rack here and I thought it would be fun to do like a planning our outfits of the week. I have so much outfit inspo that I save on my Instagram. I kind of prefer Instagram. I use the saved folder more than I use Pinterest because Pinterest I feel like, I don't know, I feel like so many people find cool stuff on Pinterest and I don't really see it that much. I go on every once in a while but I follow a lot of people whose style I love. And if I see an outfit I like, I just save it to my little folder there. And then it comes to moments like these where I want to try to recreate some of the outfits. So this is my little saved outfit folder. Yeah, lots of inspo in here. Let's do this one. I kind of liked this chick, this chicky poo faker strom. Can you see it there? She's done like a high necked vest with a white shirt underneath and then some black pants and I thought that was kind of interesting because usually when I do layering for the most part I'll do like a v-neck vest or a v-neck sweater and I kind of like that she did the high neck even with a collared shirt so I wanted to see if I could do it with the vest I got from H&M earlier earlier this year so these are a pair of old pants I have from Wilfred from Aritzia just plain little black pants in the photo, she's actually wearing loafers with the pants. I don't have loafers. I really, really want loafers, even though there's definitely absolutely nowhere I'm going to be wearing them right now. But I'd love to get myself a pair of classic loafers. I'm pretty specific with the styles I like, and I haven't found ones that I like yet. But I'm definitely on the lookout, and I want to add loafers to my life and my wardrobe. But I do have my white sneakers. These are actually Common Projects sneakers um, I bought this year, earlier this year. I got them on sale from Essence. I'm gonna try and see how this looks together. Okay, so this is the outfit, guys. Yeah, I wouldn't normally pair like something that wasn't v-neck with my collared shirts, but I actually really love how this looks. I think it's super sleek, and man, I have not worn these pants in so long, but I need to like keep reminding myself that like a good, comfy, stretchy trouser is equally as comfortable, but then you look a lot more put together when you're walking around the house. So I think my socks are a little wild with this. I definitely see how a loafer could make this look a lot more put together with like a bare ankle, I guess. But until then, I think the sneakers work okay for now. I kind of like it. I like it. Okay, so the next look I wanted to attempt was from Shapelovich. Shapelovic. This one here, some white denim and a big baggy t-shirt. That sounds right up my alley. And it's definitely not something I have put together before. 
I definitely wouldn't be wearing heels with it. <laughs> we can put some heels on just for fun, I think, just to play, but it would definitely be sneakers or slippers for this gal. <laughs> so for this outfit, I actually paired the white denim with my totem boots, my pointed like kitten heel boots. The shirt, yeah, I'm not, not feeling this life. It's definitely comfy. Kinda looks cute from the back, but I don't know if this is my, uh, my cup of tea. I'm kind of, kind of undecided here, guys. I just don't know if this is like the right t-shirt for it. I feel like her t-shirt had quite a big design on the front, which definitely gave it a different look. This one does just kind of look like I'm rolling out of bed and putting this on, which I'm so fine with. But, um, love how the, the bottom looks at the boots. Don't love the top. Okay, and then in her actual look, she had the, the cuff of the jeans rolled up and then she's wearing a heel. Definitely looks more spicy with a heel. But like I said before, I ain't gonna be wearing heels. Oh. Okay, so the next look is one that I haven't actually considered all that much because I'm still on the hunt for like my perfect gray trousers. I had the ones from Marquette that were so perfect. They were one size too big. And when I went to order my proper size, they were all sold out and they've been gone. And I'm so sad because they're the perfect shade of gray. I bought these ones from Zara that are just a little bit off. So this outfit isn't working in the way it could be, but I don't know how to say her name. I, th I think it's Grace, but she is a fabulous, fabulous woman from Montreal. And I love this like gray on gray tone that she's got going on here. Both the pieces, the sweater and the pants are a lighter gray, which yeah, I just don't have that in a pant at the moment. So I tried my best to recreate it with what I have. And let's see, let's see how it looks. So for this look, I think we get the general idea. These were a pair of pants I bought from Zara that are way too big. <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie, I have actually been wearing these around the house because they are just so comfy. And I tried that little hack. You take the button, loop it through the belt loop, and then do it up like that. I think that was a Valeria hack I saw, which works, but then you're left with this like crazy crumpled knot thing. So I don't really know how to feel about that. But for the sizing, it definitely helps keep them a little bit more <laughs> snug. But as for the outfit itself, the general idea, gray on gray, love this so much. I definitely want to find me some like perfect gray trouser. This actually doesn't look too bad. I feel like the overhang of the sweater kind of hides it, but I put two different shoes. I feel like this looks really cute with like a white sneaker for a more casual look and then for those more wintry, blustery days, you can put on some boots. And I feel like it actually looks really good with both. Let me step into the sun here. Yeah, the grays just don't flow. This one, the pants are like blue, which is kind of odd, but love the idea. Need to find some gray trousers. If you guys have any favorites, let me know. So the next outfit in Spo comes from Naomi Ross. And I love what she did here. She's wearing a blue turtleneck with a white undershirt and some gray pants, white sneakers. Now we've already established that I'm still on the hunt for ideal gray trousers. But I also did mention before that I had picked up a few pieces from Basilica and this is one of my new sweaters that I got and it just so happens to be blue. So I've tried this on with the trousers. It's definitely not happening with these pants, but the idea is there. So here's the overall look. I think the idea is great. These pants just are a little bit too, I don't know, a little bit too baggy for me, I think, to make this outfit be a win. But I do love the layering of the shirt underneath the turtleneck here. I do love this sweater so much. Okay, so the next <laughs> outfit hasn't really worked out for me. This is another Naomi Ross one, and I love the green sweater she's wearing in these photos. I love it so much. It says it's from Oakenford. And here's the thing. I feel like the sweater that I have chosen for this look just isn't working out in the same way. I'm trying to get that look. I don't know if it's succeeding. This is another one of those outfits that I feel like the loafer is definitely like a deciding factor of the success of this outfit. You need that like bare ankle space, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what that would be for, like for dimension. I don't know, I tried putting it with boots with the leather pants and it just doesn't like 
it definitely just doesn't look as good on me so i tried pairing it with heels to give it the same or similar effect so this is the outfit here <laughs> this is my arquette shirt and then this is an h&m sweater i've had that has a really big like slit in it on the back I paired my full leather leggings with it and then these are just some heels I tossed on to give that like similar skin looking feel. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one. I feel like I, I like it needs the loafers or the heels or else I'd be swimming in it. I've put another outfit on and as I was trying to film this video, um, it was just getting so aggressively dark. It's so hard to film in natural light in these winter winter hours it's like 3 p.m and it feels like 11 p.m uh anyway i was just trying to switch the room around a little bit to try and get more light and i figured i'd show you i know this is very much straying from the outfits moment but i was getting frustrated and i needed to do something about it so this is like the corner of the room and i don't know why i didn't do this before i know why i didn't do this before because the desk I always wanted the makeup table to be in front of the window. So the table has always lived here in front of the window so that when I'm filming like my everyday looks and whatnot, you know, I can have natural light on the table, but for the mirror, for clothing, whatever, like the mirror being in this dark corner where there's no windows, you just can't see anything. So I tried putting it here and it's a little bit better because you at least get like a distant image of the mirror in the in the side but alas my friends it is now officially too dark <laughs> we tried i tried recreating some of the outfits but apparently um apparently i need some gray pants and some loafers so if you guys have favorites definitely let me know in the comments below <laughs> the outfit i decided upon today is this this is a very old equipment shirt that i'm pretty sure i've only worn once and I've had it for a very, very long time. She needs to be pulled out and worn and used. This is also an equipment uh, v-neck sweater that I have also had for quite some time. I think I got this last year. These are my little old ripped A Goldie jeans. And then I've got my H&M boots on. So now I need to go on a little outside adventure. I need to go send some packages, pick up some packages, and maybe get some groceries as well. We're running a little low, so let's let's go see what Dan's up to and go on an outdoor adventure. It is freezing, freezing outside. So I've put my full-blown, full-length puffer on and I've put a hat on. We mean business. Alright guys, the nighttime tea is made. Dan and I look at my look at my eyes. <laughs> we are on the home stretch guys, the final week of Landmas. Be sure to check out I mean the final videos, all of them obviously, but the last five vids specifically. Banging out the final giveaways guys. Get ready, subscribe, turn on your notification bell so you know when we're uploading a new video. We'll see you all tomorrow for a new Landmas video. Bye!